I think for a lot of hosts right now, that's what you're gonna have to do to yes. continue mm -hmm. to be competitive. Because if you don't, everyone else is gonna be doing yes. it and you're gonna fall behind. Three years ago, I never imagined I'd be buying Airbnbs in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I am is because I started with yeah. long-term rentals. What can I do better? Where do I go from here? If you told me three years ago, I'd be looking for hotels, I'd be like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. We are the Real Estate Robinsons. Well, Felipe, welcome to the channel, man. Thanks, Tony. Super excited to have you. Uh, do you, you like just touched down in California like not even 24 hours ago, huh? That's right. We uh, <laughs> made a family trip out of it. No. We brought the kids to Disney and here we are. Yeah, cool, man. <laughs> well, dude, you, you've got an incredible story. Recently gone full time into your Airbnb business. Just picked up a couple co-hosting clients, looking at buying hotels. You've come an incredibly long way. Uh, we're we're going to get to all that in a second here. But first, let's kind of go back to the genesis of your story, right? Um, what, what initially led you to get started investing in real estate? Yeah, so it's not something that I honestly intended to get into. I, I was in tech. Mm -hmm. I really actually enjoyed my job in tech. I was working on self-driving cars. It was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. But then in 2020, uh, I worked for Uber and... Mm -hmm. um, Uber sold their division. Mm -hmm. And me, my entire team, and a whole lot of people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was a wake-up call. Like, okay, this job is awesome. It's my dream job, but I'm not in control. Mm -hmm. Like, what can I do differently? And I honestly wanted to start a business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people have, uh, you know, reached that point that, and that's how they get into real estate. For me, it was more like, I want to get a business. Mm -hmm. And doing some research, I found out the easiest one to get into and the, and the highest rate of success was real estate. Yeah. And I read David Green's book, The Burr Book. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was my rich dad, poor dad. I was like, holy, like, this is crazy. Like, right. I can buy a house and remodel it, add a bunch of value to it, and leave very little money invested into the house. Mm -hmm. So that's how we originally got started. Is okay. I found real estate as a way to create a business that would allow me to be in control of my future. Dude, I love that you called out that real estate has like the highest rate of success. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times when people think of starting a business, they think of, oh, I'm going to open up a restaurant or I'm mm -hmm. going to do drop shipping or I'm gonna yeah. do, but, but like mm -hmm. being a real estate investor is also running a mm -hmm. business. And honestly, yeah. I, I think that's something that a lot of people miss is just because we're real estate investors, like doesn't save you from being a good business owner. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you still have to run your real estate investments like you would a traditional exactly. business as well. Mm -hmm. um, and dude, there's like similarities to our stories also, because <laughs> I also lost my job in 2020. <laughs> I also worked in tech yeah. and, you know, so I worked at Tesla. That was my last day job. And even before I was let go, I had these moments where I felt unsecure in my job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, same thing, like working in the test was super cool. Stock price went crazy while I was there. You know, they're launching like the coolest electric yeah. vehicles, like yeah. literally changing the world, you know? So it yeah. was cool to be a part of that environment, but it happened twice where mm -hmm. every single person between Elon Musk, who is the CEO and me yep. got fired. Yep. It happened <laughs> twice. So imagine being the guy that's sitting here watching your your VP get yeah. fired, your director get fired, your senior director, your man, like, and then yeah. you're the last person standing twice. I was like, man, so, something's got to give here. So yeah. that was that was initially what kind of prompted me to say, okay, we really need to take this mm -hmm. whole real estate thing seriously. Because even if I love the job, even if I do well, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still very replaceable. Yes, exactly. Right, like that, mm -hmm. that the, the day that they fired me, the next day, you wouldn't yes. even know that I was gone, yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, whereas now in my business, if I left, it would stop, yes. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so like a, there, there's a certain level of like, I want to be in control of what's going on in yes. my life. And it sounds like that's what that's what drove you a little bit too. Exactly. And, you know, it happened to you at Tesla, it happened to me at Uber, mm -hmm. but I also worked at Amazon and yeah. it was the same thing. Amazon was the most successful company in the world and I wasn't impacted while mm -hmm. I was there, but I saw many super talented people who did a great job and worked mm -hmm. crazy hours lose your job, their job overnight. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it happens, you know, to me, it was a way of how can I have a backup plan? And that's how it started. It was mm -hmm. a backup plan as a side gig. I, 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 I intended, I maybe in 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. I would be able to quit my job and focus on that. We happened a lot faster than I thought, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, less than three years uh, yeah. is, is how long it took it's us. It's an incredible time, man. Yeah. Less than three years. And it just goes to show, like, when you really put your nose down mm -hmm. and you focus on something, it doesn't take forever. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's if you can sacrifice for a sh few short years, mm -hmm. that makes the the next part so much easier. You have this awakening to say, mm -hmm. I need to build something for myself. Mm -hmm. And this is around 2020. What's your first step? Do you jump right into the Airbnb space? Uh, like what, what's your first investment and, and how did that one go? Actually, not really. I, I didn't know much. I actually didn't know anything at all about Airbnb space. I started with almost everything. Everyone who starts with uh, real estate go to bigger pockets, mm -hmm. and at the time, bigger pockets was all about long term rentals. Right. Um, so that's what we did. We lived in Pittsburgh at the time, mm -hmm. and we say the, the the purchase price to rent ratio in Pittsburgh is very very 
good mm -hmm. and it's very healthy to have long-term rentals there. Our very first deal was a single family, long-term rental. Um, I remember the numbers were exactly the numbers. It's 110 purchase price. Yeah. Uh, we put about 25,000 in just to make it rent ready. Right. Uh, and he appraised for 220. Dude, uh, three months later. That's amazing. Yeah. Super similar numbers to my first deal. I bought it for, uh, I think a, I think it was like 100,000, maybe a little bit less, somewhere in that mm -hmm. ballpark. I think we spent more on the rehab. It was about 60K on the rehab and say, I made a praise for like 250 or something yeah. like that, you know? So immediately I'm like, holy crap. You're like, this is a lot easier yeah. than what it sounds, yeah. you know? And that, and I looked at it and I'm like, holy, this whole birthing works. Yeah. Like, oh, this right? is amazing. Like we left no money invested. And yeah. So that's how it started, you know, yeah. long-term rentals. And it was great mm -hmm. until it wasn't right. <laughs> because we, you know, once I got the confidence that this, this process, this system works and we know how to buy, we know how to remodel, we went all in and we bought uh, 12 long-term rentals in mm -hmm. a matter of like, I think 18 months. Very, okay. Very so short. let's, let's pause on that. Cause I, I know what everyone's initial reaction is like, dude, how did you finance 12 mm -hmm. purchases in 18 months? Yeah. So just like ballpark or, you know, high level, was it all just cash you guys had saved up? Mm -hmm. Was it just you guys burying and recycling that same capital? Like what was your process to fund that many deals? Exactly. Exactly. No, good question. So because I was in tech, I did have a little bit of money to get started. I think mm -hmm. it was about between 40 and 50,000 yeah. uh, that we had cash to, to start the journey. But everything that we bought, we always use hard money lenders or mm -hmm. private money lenders later okay. on in the journey uh, to fund those. Okay. So we would, you no, know, the money that we had was more to, you know, sometimes have to pay contractors ahead of time mm -hmm. or buy materials or mm -hmm. uh, you have the interest rates on the, on the hard money loans. But basically we would do one property, go through the whole process, put the money out and do it again, mm -hmm. you know, uh, by leveraging hard money lenders. Dude, so it's, it's crazy to me that you were able to move that fast. Like how your rehabs must have not taken that long if you could cycle through that many deals. Yeah. Like you're talking like a deal every other month almost. Yeah, no, yeah, we we had, it was about about that actually, about yeah. one every, every other month. And we worked with three or four different hard money lenders. Mm. So <laughs> I remember at one point they max you out at yeah. two deals per yeah. uh, hard money lender. And at one point we're having three, Three hard money lenders ongoing um, mm -hmm. because we're you know basically leveraging everything we can to right. keep going. Right. Once I get over analysis paralysis, mm -hmm. I kind of go all in and sometimes mm -hmm. go too fast. Right. <laughs> this one of the cases that I think if I had gone a little bit slower, maybe I would have realized some of the mistakes I was making sooner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think once you develop relationships and you find the lenders and you uh, you kind of get the trust that what you're doing is working. Uh, it becomes a lot easier to fund the deals. The first one is always the hardest. Yeah, and for everyone that's watching, right? So a hard money lender is mm -hmm. basically, they're a business that specializes in mm -hmm. lending, uh, specifically for real estate investors who are doing rehab properties. Mm -hmm. So in Felipe's situation, he was buying distressed properties, like properties that needed to be fixed up. Hard money lenders lend you the money you need, a yes. portion of it, yeah. for the down payment, closing costs, and the, the rehab costs. The upside is that these are, loans it would be harder to get from like a traditional credit union local bank etc definitely like a bank of america or any of those big banks downside is typically the interest rates are a little bit higher so you're, you're jumping through some more hoops the cost of the money is a little bit higher but if you use it the right way it, it's it's a win-win yeah, yeah. right and i'm laughing a little bit because you say high interest rates uh, we used to get hard money lenders for like eight and a half, and that's yeah. how long, how much it, it, refinance right, different is Different time, right? Yeah, because exactly. he's doing this in 2020, interest rates are yes. like, you know, 3%. Exactly. So. But yeah. that's usually what you see. Hard money lenders are going to be, you know, maybe, you know, definitely a few percentage points yeah. above what a traditional kind of single family uh, residential mortgage would be. And now in 2023, now in, in December 23, hard money lenders are going for between 10 and 11. Yeah, uh, and that's actually not too yeah. bad, especially yeah. given that, you know, single family homes are like a six or seven right now, exactly. right? So it's not too bad. And again, if you're doing a smaller purchase price, mm -hmm. your initial payment is, you know, less than a thousand a month. Yeah. And if you're doing a rehab with two to three months, it's, it's really not that, yeah. um, that much of interest you're paying. So the hard money is definitely a tool for those of you that mm -hmm. have the appetite for a rehab to, to kind of go after that. Yes. So let me, let me ask this question, Felipe, because there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people here who probably understand the value mm -hmm. of buying a distressed asset, mm -hmm. but how do you find those deals? Mm -hmm. And then how do you actually get good at the rehab? And guys, for those of you that are watching, we're gonna get to short-term rental stuff in a second here, but this mm -hmm. question's important because it lays the foundation for what Felipe did once he got to the Airbnb space. Yeah. But yeah, answer those questions. How are you finding those deals? Mm -hmm. Like, were you sending mailers? Were you knocking on mm -hmm. doors? And then how are you managing those rehabs? Yeah, so we, our initial so deal source came from a uh, direct seller. Mm -hmm. uh, we owned a Homevestors franchise and, and Homevestors is one of the bigger uh, wholesaling franchises in, in the country yeah. and basically the way you do is you uh you put in a 
three, four thousand dollars a month in advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, there's usually more than one franchise in a market, mm -hmm. and then you split the leads for the entire market with other franchise owners in that market. Okay. Uh, so because I had a full time job, mm -hmm. um, I was looking for how, what is the fastest way I can get into the real estate thing. Like, mm -hmm. and at the time. Uh, it was, you know, leveraging the the marketing, leveraging the tools that the franchise already had yeah. in place. Uh, Interesting, so we, man. we would get I mean, between 20 and 30 leads uh, a month. Really? Uh, kind of the, the average that we looked at na nationwide for home, for home investors. At the time, I'm not sure how it is now. I'm, I don't own the franchise anymore. Uh, but at the time was, you know, you get 20 leads. Uh, eight of those turn into a, an appointment where you actually go to the seller's house. You make five offers, you close on one. Mm. So kind of like a, you know... You close in one every 20 leads do you get in. Gotcha. Yeah. And did you find those numbers held true? Uh, we actually closed a little bit more than that. Okay. Uh, I always try to be more aggressive. Than <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a challenge to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, and the reason, was, uh, the reason why we closed on more is because we have multiple exit strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're not just wholesaling it. Right. We, we could, were keeping some of them. Right. Exactly. We were flipping some. We were um, wholesaling others. You mm -hmm. know? So we were able to always find, um, once we got the house, we were able to always find a way to disposition them. Gotcha. Uh, depending okay. on what we're looking for. So you, you go the home investors route, get a few leads through them. Uh, was that your only source of deal flow or did you look at some other things? That's as a well? good question. No, so that, it was my initial lead flow because I didn't have any time to kind of look on Zillow and all right. that stuff, you know, at the time. But then we transitioned more into, you know, we get more into the Airbnb space, but the, the leads that got into home investors were, were more uh, lower end homes that didn't mm -hmm. make a good fit on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So little by little, I started transitioning into looking for my own deals okay. and, uh, I actually, most of my houses that I buy for Airbnb today come from market, uh, yeah. all market deals. Which is, you know, I think for a lot of people watching, they always feel that in order to get a really, really good deal, you can't buy on market. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case, right? It's not. Because first, sometimes people list things for prices they know that are unreasonable. Mm -hmm. I just talked to another investor yesterday and she was in Philadelphia and there was a property that was listed for like 590 and she said she ended up closing on it for 390 so the purchase price is a suggestion. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not a hard, fast rule that you have to follow. So for everyone that's watching, it's like, if you don't have deal flow off market, then look at the stuff that's yeah. listed and just start making offers based on what makes sense for you. Like when we were, when we were investing super heavily in Joshua Tree, I would send my agent 10, 15 properties mm -hmm. at a time. Purchase price, purchase price, purchase price, purchase price. I get no's back on, you know, 19 mm -hmm. of the 20. Mm -hmm. But all I needed was one. Yeah. And, it, you know, you do have to find an agent that understands you're an investor and that you're you're not just going to buy one home every decade, but you're going to buy one home every quarter, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and that they're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs and jump through these hoops. But, like, there's still so many good deals, especially as an Airbnb investor, that are literally listed on the MLS right now today. The one thing I would add to that, Tony, is you mentioned Joshua Tree, and you know that market in the back of your hand. You know mm -hmm. that market really, really well. You yeah. know what houses should be selling for. Right. And I think I'm guessing for the, the person in Philadelphia is the same thing. The mm -hmm. only reason they offer low is because they know that market. Right. And for us in Pittsburgh at the time, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. We were able to get a lot of great deals on market because we knew that market so well. We knew the potential the house had. Mm -hmm. We knew what the, the eventual ARV would be. One of my better deals ever in Airbnb, you know, any real estate deals ever, uh, it was a house that was listed on market for over six months, no mm. offers. Uh, we came in, um, we put up 20% below, I think it was listed for 240, we bought it for 200. And it's now, a, it crashes, it crashes on Airbnb. Like mm. it does super on Airbnb, one of the most profitable ones. And again, I, I knew the potential of that because I knew the market. I knew that the house was listed above what it should be worth. And nobody saw the potential. So I think sometimes people spend so much time looking for deals in 20 different markets. And if you don't focus on one and learn that market really, really well, it would be difficult to find you know, that one great deal that is listed on the market that nobody sees it. Couldn't agree with you more, man. Like, and this is why, you know, when people come into Alpha Host, our, our coaching program, one of the very first things that we have them do is try and get clarity on their market selection. Because mm -hmm. what I see a lot of new investors do is they're looking at 20 different markets. Yes. Yeah. Or like they're subscribed to some newsletter that's showing them properties from all across the country. And they're mm -hmm. just trying to analyze every yes. single deal that's coming across their desk. You can't get good at analyzing deals when you're spread so thin. Yes. And ideal, if you can get down to like three, maybe five markets mm -hmm. and get really, really good at those five markets, yes. then you can be confident. You can identify those opportunities like mm -hmm. you did to say, mm -hmm. man, this property is underpriced or man, this one's actually a really good deal because I've seen mm -hmm. this same property 10 other times yes. mm -hmm. and I've, I've, I know what happens with it. So dude, I, I, I absolutely love that, man. So you guys go off market with home investors. Mm -hmm. You get some stuff on market. Any other deal flow that, that worked well for you guys? Uh, yeah, we initially was just home investors. Yeah. When we we're still doing all long terms, uh, when we shifted to short term rentals, uh, it was 
basically everything that was on market. Gotcha. Very traditional, like we just talked about, just finding deals that when people just don't see that. Gotcha. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about the the rehab piece, man, because mm -hmm. um, I, I do think that there is a lot of value mm -hmm. in finding an old beat up property, mm -hmm. buying it at a discount, putting in some blood, sweat, and tears to mm -hmm. get it, you know, up to 2023, 2024 standards. Um, but a lot of people are nervous about the rehab piece. Mm -hmm. What was your experience managing rehabs before you did that first one as an investor? I knew absolutely nothing about <laughs> <laughs> rehabs, about houses, about, uh, I, I come from Brazil where the construction is completely different. Yeah. Like, uh, so it was scary to be honest. I, I think f for me, two things that worked out really well, um, was, was one, my wife does have a, a background in construction, so that, that helped us get started. Yeah. Um, she's an interior designer, so you know, she, she had some, she filled in the, 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 the initial knowledge that I didn't, she mm -hmm. filled, in there, filled in there. But even for myself, like I, I'm the one looking for deals, right? So I, if I don't know how much a model is gonna cost or how long it's gonna take, we're not gonna get any deals or we're gonna get terrible deals before it even get to my wife or who does the, the rehab and the management and all that. I think rehabbing is one of those things that the first one is scary mm -hmm. and there's a good chance you're gonna make a mistake. Yeah. But it's 100% worth it because once you get, you understand what it takes to build a house, rehab a house, and uh, it comes down to, every house has five systems. You know, you have the plumbing, you have electrical, you have roofing, uh, foundation, um, and then structural. Like, mm -hmm. those, th that's it. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so initially when we bought houses, we had a rule of if two of those, uh, if more than two of those need you know, significant rehab, it's too much for us, mm -hmm. right? So we're taking little, smaller remodels, you know, smaller uh, you know, initially some cosmetics maybe, uh, and then from there you kind of graduate and you get more confidence, and, mm. and you learn you learn more and, and start big, moving to bigger projects and bigger mm. models. I, I love that approach of kind of starting small and scaling up from there. Mm -hmm. Like the way that we've always like our, our very first rehab, the way that we built out our scope of work, like what it is we want to in mm -hmm. the property. I just looked at other Airbnbs were in that market. I said, okay, this one looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Hey, contractor, can we just make it look like this yeah. one? You know, <laughs> and then as you as you get more uh, kind of mature in the process, you start to really build out a scope of work. You go in mm -hmm. room by room and talking about all these things. But like you said, I, I think it's start with something small where it's just like, hey, mm -hmm. I need to put a new flooring, maybe redo a kitchen and a bathroom. Mm -hmm everything else can kind of stay the same. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into the bigger stuff. Like, dude, I remember the first time we bought a house, there was a house we were looking at and uh, the ceiling had collapsed during escrow. Like literally, like I've I, I walked picture, the property <laughs> and then before we went to go close, I just happened to walk it again. Yeah. There was a big hole in the yeah. ceiling. And you know, Sarah was kind of like freaking out. She's like, oh my God, we can't buy this house. And you know, and I was like, babe, just like relax, you know, like let's see what it would cost to yeah. fix this. So I call my contractor, you know, he, he meets at the property. He's like, yeah, I can fix this. Like literally just shrug, you're like, yeah, I can, like no big deal, you know? As you go on that journey, as you see different things, you start to feel more confident, more comfortable taking on bigger deals. Yeah. And, um, and I think it's funny you mentioned that because initially when you're starting and you mm -hmm. see a house that something like that happens, it scares you. Mm -hmm. Later on, it's like, that's music to my ears. I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> like what? That's, that's a way to add value. Yeah. And that's where you make a lot of money in, in real estate is by adding value. Yeah. yeah. Do you say make a lot of money in life in general? Right? The yes. more value you can add, you know, yeah. the, the more successful you tend to be. So you, you, you find your niche in the long-term burring. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the phrase burr, it stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Um, mm -hmm. My buddy David Green wrote the book Burr. Um, so you can check it out in the Bigger Pockets bookstore. Um, but it changed a lot of lives for a lot of people, obviously Felipe as well. So you, you find your niche in the burr strategy. Mm -hmm. You knock this out a few times in the mm -hmm. long-term rental space. What's the cue that kind of goes off to make you say, okay, I need to really focus on Airbnbs? A couple of things happen and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll touch on this. So, so number one, full-time job, family to raise, mm -hmm. um, buying houses, analyzing deals, managing models. What I didn't have time to do was look at finances. Yeah. Big mistake investors make initially. Like mm -hmm. end of the year bookkeeping is like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So I go to my first year and I get to the end and I'm like, I actually lost money this year. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how, how did that happen? And I look and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, we had to replace one roof in this one property. Mm -hmm. And that means the cash flow for that property plus two others got right. taken out. Mm -hmm. I had to replace a furnace for this other property. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what, we're creating out all this equity, and we did. We, we, we for, on paper, we made a lot of money because right. of the equity created, all totally. that stuff. But at the end of the day, your bank account is getting smaller. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's like something has to change. Right. And, and I remember I knew very little about Airbnb, but I had a buddy who was doing it very successful in uh, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, you know, I, that's too far, too scary. What can I do? You know, so I, I lived in Texas, in Austin. Uh, the short-term shop had just launched a uh, the Crystal Beach market in, okay. in Texas. I was like, oh, that's a four-hour drive. Always wanted to have a beach house. Why not, mm -hmm. right? And I, and I had my very first Airbnb was uh, in Crystal Beach. It crushed it, like 
very quickly as well. And I was like, okay, that works, but you know, I can't afford to buy a beach house. <laughs> Every single thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, like I can't. Yeah. So I'm like, what do we do well? We burr. Mm -hmm. we, we, we do burr really well. We, we, we know how to find deals that are good for, for burring. We know the Pittsburgh market very well. Let's try it, mm -hmm. right? So we, we tried uh, Airbnb in Pittsburgh. I had a million doubts in my head because if you think of a sexy market, Pittsburgh is never one of those. <laughs> um, I was only surprised like yeah. when I heard how well your Pittsburgh, you know, this isn't a knock on Pittsburgh, but yeah. you know, me being in California, I've never, I've never been to that part yeah. of the country. So. Yeah, and I live there and Pittsburgh, by the way, is, is a million times nicer than most people think. I actually love going over there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so we, we tried Airbnb in Pittsburgh and mm -hmm. went really well. Uh, and then I was like, you know, what, let's try it again. And mm -hmm. we we went from, you know, uh, our first Airbnb was in December twenty one, uh, well, two day, two years exactly to the mm -hmm. dates now. Uh, and then we have now twelve Airbnbs. With two of those are beach houses only, and the other ten are in Pittsburgh. And yeah. I'll say that the Pittsburgh ones are much more profitable than my beach houses today, actually. Which is crazy, right? Yeah. And that's something I've, I've started to notice as well, just like as the economy's kind of shifted and changed, um, you know, post-COVID, saw a big boom in the vacation rental mm -hmm. markets. Uh, but you're starting to see the, the metros kind of, even though they didn't peak as high as mm -hmm. the vacation markets did, they've been a little bit more steady. I'm like, dude, we just launched our first like metro units in Dallas. And those units have been so easy, mm -hmm. like so easy. Yeah. People stay longer. Uh, their yeah. expectations are significantly lower because yes. yeah. a lot of times they're not necessarily there for a vacation. They're there because of like work or family or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like when it's a vacation, people took time off of work. Mm -hmm. People are, are looking forward to making memories. And like there's, there's this whole different level of expectation. Yeah. But in the metros, I feel like it's it's a different demographic of travel and it's just easier. Yeah, it is. And, and there's also demand all year round for the yeah. most part, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we have houses are walking distance to the Steelers Stadium, right? Mm -hmm. And sure, there's only eight Steelers games a year, but... They have concerts all year round. Right. You know, they have events and conferences. And uh, one thing I'll say about Pittsburgh is like, <laughs> people don't leave Pittsburgh. They, mm -hmm. they live there for their entire lives. And if they leave, they always come back to visit. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it, it's a very strong inner city culture. I have mm -hmm. never met, seen any other city in the US like that. So there's always demand. Like mm -hmm. uh, even the slow months, sometimes people come in and book for two weeks because they're visiting family. Right. You know? So it, it's, uh, it works out really well. So look, look, can we talk numbers on maybe one of your, yeah. your short-term rentals? So you've got the two in Crystal Beach, you've got 10 in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Um, maybe talk, talking about your worst deal first. My worst deal. Yeah, which one is your worst one? Because I, I know my worst one for 2023 right now. Yeah, my worst one is my first one in Pittsburgh. We purchased for 183,000, we put 100,000 in, in remodel. Uh, made it look really nice, and uh, the ARV was four fifty, about four fifty. Wow, right? that's so, amazing, man! So we left no money invested. You know, mm -hmm. we pulled all of our money out with all the fees and furnishing and all that. We didn't really make extra, mm -hmm. but and so you're in it, it for nothing. For nothing, exactly, yeah. right? And was that was that your goal? Target ARV was that four or whatever? Did it, it was did about it, yeah. Oh, so you knew that it was going to be worth about it that was much. about yes, gotcha. it would be about that much. And they actually did really well on Airbnb the first year, mm -hmm. but this was our very first Airbnb you know, outside of the beach house, mm -hmm. uh, and at the time. We didn't really think about amenities. We didn't think about, you know, mm -hmm. what can we make this house special? So right. first year, this was, you know, we launched in uh, March 2022. Mm -hmm. So 2022 did really, really well. Uh, it has gone down a lot this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I compare that house to my other ones in Pittsburgh, uh, it has severely underperformed the other ones. Mm -hmm. and, and I started thinking, why? Why? Like, why is that, right? So first of all, it's not in a central location in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh like mm -hmm. my other ones are. So that's one. But most importantly, there's really nothing special about the house, mm -hmm. right? And... I think that relates to a lot of people's Airbnb story. Like you launched an Airbnb in 2022, 2021, you made a lot of money. And now everyone is like, oh my gosh, it's crashing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, sure. But like, what, what does your house have that right. others don't? Mm -hmm. and, and this is an example for me, the, the house that has nothing special. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful house in a good location, but- That's not enough anymore. It. It's yeah. not, exactly. I heard someone say recently that we're entering into the Airbnb arms or the Airbnb amenities arms race. Yes. And I, I dude, when I heard that, I was like, man, that's so good. And it's so true, right? Because before you could just slap up a, you know, a nice, cute, cozy home on Airbnb mm -hmm. and make a killing. Now you really have to focus on guest experience. You really have to focus on amenities. Mm -hmm. You really have to focus on like reviews on all exactly. of those things. Like you've gotta be an A plus host now if you wanna do well. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that's why so many people have soured on Airbnb because they didn't have the dedication to really exactly. buckle down and do what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So right, what would exactly you do with right. this property? So I actually just, just decided to sell it two days ago. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just talked to a realtor and uh, we're about break even. Um, actually, no, we may, we still projected to make about between ten and fifteen thousand profits on okay. that house, but we do have a lot of equity. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing that I also learned from David Green's book is uh, return on equity. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, 
this equity can make a lot more money somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and good thing again, we bought it right, we bought it at the right price. It's in a great location. So we, we're going to take the money and hopefully put it into a hotel or something. There you go, like man. That. Love yeah. that, brother. Um, cool. So talking about your, your best deal. My best deal. Let's talk about Pittsburgh one yeah. as well. Uh, so this one, I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier. It was a house that was listed for about six months. Mm -hmm. um, it was listed for 240 and a five bedroom, so a larger home. And it's a 1.1 miles to the Steelers Stadium yeah, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I was like, you know, there's some potential here. Yeah. And at the time, I still owned uh, the Home Bassett franchise. Yeah. And whenever and could, I just I just want to pause you for a yeah. second, really quick, man, because like the fact that you bought a home a mile away from a major stadium yeah. for like two hundred thousand yeah. dollars is insane to me. Because like for me, we've got like you know Crypto.com Arena, and we've yeah. got no, no. the Forum, <laughs> and like you're trying to buy anything yeah. a mile from those places for two hundred thousand dollars is like insane. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go. It's it's a good call because Pittsburgh is an older town, mm -hmm. so there is a lot of opportunity in, in older towns to yeah. find distressed properties. Yeah. So that's why our bird worked really well there. Mm -hmm. It might not be the case in in, in bigger metro or, or like newer per se mm -hmm. cities, you know. But I think back to the, to that that house, we purchased for two hundred. I had three or four people tell me that was a terrible deal because there's no way you're going to make this house look mm -hmm. like a 400,000 house. I was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> let's, let's do it. My wife is a great designer. Yeah. Uh, so we, we spent about 100,000 on remodel as well. And by this time, we're no longer using hard money lenders. We're, we're using private money lenders, okay. which, you know, for others, others, it's about the same. It's, you know, it's a short-term loan. Mm -hmm. But the difference is you're not dealing with banks. You're dealing with a private investor, somebody who, you know, is willing to make the money work on, on something. Yeah. The house appraised for 425 actually, mm -hmm. about the same as the other one that didn't right. do well. So, again, we used the money to buy furniture and all that stuff. So, we didn't leave much invested. But because this house is bigger and closer to the Steelers Stadium, um, it did a little over 100000 revenue last year. Uh, wow. over, not in the last year, over the last 12 months. We are actually, again, we launched this a little bit over a year ago. So we, at that time, we already had eye for amenities. You know, we have a hot tub in this one. The mm -hmm. design is more more Airbnb friendly, like you right. know, for, on, on vacation. But again, kind of back to the mentality of what worked back then doesn't work now. We're still upgrading this property. Yeah. We're, we're adding uh, actually a couple of different, a couple more beds to increase the occupancy. We mm -hmm. are adding a game room. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just, we're ready. So it's 100,000 revenue. The profit on this one is about three to four thousand a month. Wow, net. dude, that is amazing. Yeah. Dude, and on a two, I know, I know you put more money into rehab, but on a two hundred thousand yeah. dollar purchase price, appraised at four hundred, four and some change, and to gross over a hundred thousand dollars, that's crazy, man. I, I gotta come to uh, to Pittsburgh, man. I gotta yes. come buy a property in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I have a few places you can stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, on the on the amenities piece, right? And and I love to hear you say that you're you're focused on reinvesting into that property. Mm -hmm. Sarah and I go down to Mexico a few times a year, and there's we, we go to the same resort. It's called Escaret. And every time we go there, mm -hmm. and it's like dude, one of the nicest, all inclusive places I've been to. And every single time we go there, they're always like fixing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're like repainting the handrails. Mm -hmm. They're swapping out light bulbs. They're replanting plants. Just mm -hmm. anytime you walk around that property, they're they're keeping everything up to date and fresh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was a big eye opener for me and Sarah last time we went. We're like, man, we really need to focus on that in our own portfolio as well. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing, we noticed in Joshua. Joshua is a market has has probably seen a bigger pullback than some of the other vacation mm -hmm. markets. And what we noticed was that our, our tiny homes are pretty resilient to the change. Mm -hmm. um, they saw revenue pullback, but they're still extremely profitable because, I mean, they're only 400 yeah. square feet. Um, but it was our bigger properties, like our three beds, where mm -hmm. we were seeing, um, you know, revenue being squeezed a little bit more. So we've been going back to most of our big properties and reinvesting to, to add the game rooms. Mm -hmm. And, dude, like we just, um, just I think two weeks ago, we spent like another 12000 bucks adding mini golf um, arcade games, ping pong table, and like turning the space into like a really mm -hmm. cool like game and amenities mm -hmm. area. So I think for a lot of hosts right now, that's what you're going to have to do to yes. continue mm -hmm. to be competitive. Because if you don't, everyone else is going to be doing yes. it and you know, it, it's, it, you're, you're going to fall behind. So totally. And I'm, a, I'm always worried I'm going to fall behind. So yeah. like initially I would just buy a house, forget about the house and move to the next one. Yeah. Like always looking for a deal. It's yeah. very easy to forget about what we already have. Yeah. And then I realize if I have, like you said, 12,000, you cannot buy another house for 12,000. And, mm -hmm. and if you have to put a lot more money to maybe you know, get a, you know, 10, 15% cash on cash. If you get that 20,000, 12,000 invested in your existing property, the cash on cash on that 12,000 is much higher, much, much higher. Three to $4,000 per month on your best Airbnb. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy, man. Like I, I meet a lot of people who are like, man, I want to get to whatever, 10K per month in cash flow. Mm -hmm. And, at your numbers, three properties pretty much get you there. Mm -hmm. 
three properties yeah. pretty much yeah. get you there. And I think that's the thing that people miss about the Airbnb space is that you don't need 100 single family homes like you need in the long-term rental space exactly. to be successful as a short-term rental as an Airbnb host. Obviously had like a, a ton of success doing this, man. And, and I'm super grateful that we've been able to play a small part in that. But I guess what's, what's your advice to people that are looking to get started in Airbnb today? My biggest advice is get started. And, and that sounds super simple, but like to me, I, 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 I'm, I have a background in engineering, right? So I, I always get stuck in the numbers. Mm -hmm. And if I'm always playing the numbers game, I, I'm never going to find the best deal or, or what's something that's going to work. And three years ago, I never imagined I'd be buying Airbnbs in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I am is because I started with yeah. long-term rentals. And I started, and from there I, I was, you know, okay, what can I do better? What, what, where, where do I go from here? And little by little, right, I found Airbnbs in Pittsburgh. Now we're looking for hotels. If you told me three years ago I'd be looking for hotels, I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> that's, I never want to own a hotel in my life, but yeah. only because we started, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, since we started, we, we joined Alpha Host Academy. I've met some great people there. Uh, I've learned how to have partnerships, which is really the, kind of the last piece of the puzzle that allowed me to, to quit my job was, mm -hmm. you know, this is working, you know, like you said, $3,000 a month for this one house, but it still takes my money mm -hmm. to get that going. Like if I want to quit my job, I can't be relying on putting money over and over again, right? So after joining the program, I, I learned how to leverage partnerships and the last four deals I believe that we've done were all through partnerships. So again, just get started. Don't focus too much on what's your five-year plan, what's your 10-year plan. Uh, if you asked me that four years ago, I'd be like, I, I wanna be a CEO, I wanna you know, mm -hmm. be a director here at Uber, I wanna right. be, and now I'm like, you couldn't pay me enough money to go back <laughs> to, to go that back. life. <laughs> you know, so again, Man. just start, don't focus on long term, focus on smaller action and just take action daily and, you know, life will take you to, to the next steps. Dude, I love to hear that, man. Uh, Felipe, where can people go to hear, learn more about you to, to learn more about Felipe's journey? Yes, uh, Instagram is the, you know, or really any social media, invest with Felipe okay. is my, it's pretty easy. Yeah, uh, right. Did you change your handle? Was it always the best for Felipe? It was not, actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Felipe Caldera yeah, was 008. Say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, the, the 008 kind of kills it at the end, you know? So invest with Felipe was open. I'm like, that sounds yeah, pretty cool. That's so. good, man. All right, invest yeah. with Felipe. Well, brother, I, I appreciate you coming on. And I guess I can't I can't let you go. You talked about it a little bit, man. But you joined our community, I think, earlier this year. It hasn't even been a full year yet. I guess just what what role maybe has Alpha has played in you getting mm -hmm. to, to where you're at? Yeah, so I joined in... April, but when was the, the was summit? April, yeah, April. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you guys came to Austin for the mm -hmm. summit. That was my very first uh, real estate conference. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I we didn't get to, the, to that point, but I took like four or five action items from that conference that really made a huge difference in my business. Yeah. Uh, and I also joined the program. Yeah. And when I joined the program, I already had a few Airbnb. So it's mm -hmm. not like, you know, I wasn't looking to know how to get started and on, but but I wanted to know how can I go from where I am now to really this becoming my full-time business, my full-time mm -hmm. job. Um, so I learned partnerships while mm -hmm. there. I've, I've met some great people. I posted I'm in South California, like 10 people messaged me, let's meet, let's meet, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, I think for me was every single time I join a call, you know, even now I have a, a bigger business, I always take something out of it. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing to me, honestly, is uh, you and Sarah, like you guys are beyond all like great people. And like, you I can ask you anything, that, can ask you uh, for, for support. And uh, if that's starting, if that's scaling, if that's going from Airbnb to hotels, uh, so that has made a huge difference in, in our business. Dude, I appreciate that, man. And, you know, obviously, like, it, it's our students that do the work. You, you know, we're, we're just trying to light the path for you guys. Mm -hmm. But one thing I've always appreciated about you, Felipe, is that you just take action, man. Like, dude, you're an mm -hmm. action taker. And, like, I'm, like early on, I remember one of the first calls that you were on, uh, we had talked about like social media and like the importance mm -hmm. of just like being vocal on social and dude, almost immediately, like you even changed yeah. your handle, you know, and I like did. you're, you're in it, you know? Yeah. And, and like for everyone that's watching, it's, it's like, even if you get the information, yeah. even if you get the support, even, even if you get the, the, the guidance, the coaching, if you don't take action, none of that matters mm -hmm. as much as maybe we've, we've played a role, dude, like 99.99% of that is Appreciate you're just taking it. that and, and, and running with the man. So, um, guys go follow Felipe, invest with Felipe <laughs> on all platforms, but appreciate you coming on to the channel, Thanks, man. Yeah. And, uh, looking forward to having you on soon. Absolutely. It was a pleasure.